Hey y'all, welcome to fifth grade, chapter seven, lesson two. We're gonna get started with number two. So this says three times three quarters, okay? So you can do it the way that we did it in the last chapter, but I'm gonna show you when you have a model, how you can do this. It'll make it a little bit easier, okay? So you'll notice that the denominator here is a four. So I'm gonna color one, two, three, four of them blue. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four of them purple. And then my last one is gonna be one, okay? So now I have one whole blue one, one whole purple one, so that's two, okay? And then I have one left over and my denominator would stay four, okay? So let me show you. I'm going to put that three over one, make this three quarters, would wind up being nine over four, okay? Now four would go into nine two times. I would have one left over and my denominator would be four. Oops, sorry, you guys can't see that. Okay, so when you have a model, it might be a little easier to use the denominator and color that many of them, okay? So now I'm going to go down and we're going to do this the way that we were doing it last time, okay? So, two fifths, I'm gonna put the five over one. I'm gonna cancel out our two fives and make them ones because they're the same number, okay? So then two times one is two, denominator would be one, which means two over one is two, okay? Same thing, seven over one, seven times two would be 14. My denominator would be three, okay? So the way that you find out how to make it into a mixed number from an improper fraction, it's an improper fraction because the top is bigger than the bottom, okay? Now, in order to make it into a mixed number, which is what we need, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? Okay, so what we do is we tip, we trap and we divide okay the top number goes inside the box okay now three would go into 14 four times four times three is 12 i would have two left over okay so up here when i'm telling you four would go into nine twice and then i would have one left over this is why because when i would divide it would go in twice and I would have one left over. So then, so three goes into 14 four times, I would have two left over. So my two goes here, my denominator is still three. Okay, so four and two thirds. Okay, all right. Number five, I'm gonna put the four over one. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm gonna Cross cancel with the four and the eight because four goes into four once, but four goes into eight twice. So now three times one is three, two times one is two, two goes into three one time. I would have one left over, and my denominator would be two. Now I absolutely could put three inside the box, divide it by two. I'm going to get one. One times two is two, subtract, I get one. That means that. One is my whole number, one is my numerator, and my denominator stays the same. Okay? This is exactly what I did. Two would go into three one time, I would have one left over, and two is still my denominator. Okay? We're going to go ahead and do number six. Okay? So I'm going to put the seven over a one. Okay? Seven times five. I can't really cross cancel anything because seven doesn't, six doesn't go into seven. There's nothing in common there, and five doesn't go into six or one. So no tops and bottoms are divisible by the same number. So I can't reduce anything ahead of time. So now seven times five is 35, and one times six is six. Okay. So I could go and do it this way. Okay, six would go into 35. It's not gonna go into three, but it would go into 35. 
five times for 30, subtract, and I would get five. Or I could just go six goes into 35, five times, which is 30. I would have five left over, and six is still my denominator. Okay? All right, we're going to try one more time. Put that six over a one. Okay, I can cancel out. 12 and 6. 6 goes into 6 once. 6 goes into 12 twice. Okay, so now 5 times 1 is 5. My denominator would be 2. Well, 2 would go into 5. 2 times for 4. 5 minus 4 would be 1, and my denominator is still 2. Okay, you guys try number 8. Okay, and we are going to go down and do number 9. Okay, so as Jody has a 5-pound bag of potatoes. She uses four-fifths of the bag to make potato salad. So how many pounds does she make? So she has five pounds. She uses four-fifths of that. Of in mass means multiply every time. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the five over a one because I need a fraction. Okay. And then see those two fives? One's the top and one's the bottom. So I can cross them out and put ones. Okay. So now... 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 1 will be 1, so I don't need it. So 4 pounds. Okay? All right. Lucas lives 5 eighths of a mile from the school. Kenny lives twice as far as Lucas. How many miles does Kenny live from school? So 5 eighths times 2. I'm going to put that 2 over a 1. Okay? I'm going to go through, and 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 8 four times. So now 5 times 1 is 5, 4 times 1 is 4, okay? So 4 goes into 5 one time, 1 times 4 is 4, so then 5 minus that 4 would be 1, and my denominator stays the same, and it's being measured in miles. Boom, done, okay? We're going to go on to the back where you guys are going to do the lesson check, just like always. We're going to go down and do the spiral review, okay? Mira Lake Elementary School has 168 students and chaperones going on a fifth grade class trip. Each bus can hold 54 people. What's the least number of buses that can they need for the trip? So we are going to fold our scrap paper so we can use it. And do 168, and we're going to divide that by 54. Okay, now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go 54, 108, and then I'm going to add those to get my next one. So 4 plus 8 is 12, which means I would carry a 1. 1 plus 5 is 6, and then 1. So I'm going to say... These are my multiples of 54, so that I know what I'm doing, kind of, okay? So 54, it's not going to go into 1, and it's not going to go into 16. So I'm going to have to do it into 168. 162 is going to be as close as we can get. So 1, 2, 3 times. 3 times 54 was 162, and then I'm going to have 6 left over. Now, because I have 6 left over, I'm not going to make them walk. So I have to add a bus, which means four buses, okay? Okay, make sure that you write your work down, okay? Okay, you don't have to write down your multiples, but you do have to write down the division so that you can show it, okay? All right, from an eight-foot board, a carpenter saw it off a piece that was two and three quarters feet long and another piece that was three and a half feet long. How much of the board is left? Well, first let's find out exactly how much of the board he cut off. So we're gonna add the two and three quarters and the three and a half. Then we're gonna take that eight foot board and we're gonna subtract that number, okay? So I first need a common denominator because I'm adding fractions. So between 2 and 4, my common denominator is going to be 4, okay? So I'm going to have 2, and I'm going to keep my 3 fourths because that's already 4, plus 
3, and I had to multiply the 2 by 2 to get 4, which means I need to multiply the top by 2, which is 2. Okay? All right. So now, 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. And my denominator is going to stay 4. Okay? Well, obviously, four, 5 over 4 is an improper fraction, so 4 would go into 5 once. I'm going to add 1, and then I would have 1 left over. So 6 and 1 quarters is what he took off, okay? So 8 minus 6 and 1 quarter, okay? Now, that's not a fraction, and I need to take away a fraction, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow 1, making this a 7, and I'm going to use my denominator so that I would have a common denominator and make one that is equal to one, okay? So I used four because four is what I already have over here, okay? So four over four is equal to one, which is what I borrowed, and four was my denominator, which is why I used four over four, okay? So minus six and one four, okay? All right, so now seven minus six is one, four minus one, is 3 and my denominator stays 4 and it is being measured in feet 1 and 3 quarters feet okay make sure you're showing your work or you won't get credit okay all right let's go ahead and do number five what is the value of the expression so right here over in the corner I'm going to write Sum dos. Okay. I do not have any parentheses or exponents. Okay. So I crossed them off. Okay. Now I do have a multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite my 30 minus and my plus 2 because those aren't going to disappear just because I'm going to answer this one part. Okay. So 5 times 4, 20. Okay. Got my multiplication done. Okay. I don't have any division, but I do have addition and subtraction, and it doesn't matter which I do first, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it in order, okay? So, 30 minus 20 is 10, plus 2 is 12, okay? All right, which of the following decimals has the least value? So I am going to write them down and line them up. Okay, so I'm going to fill in zeros where there are blank spots just so that I have them all and I can kind of know what I'm doing here, okay? So I know that I want the numbers as far to the end as I can get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do process of elimination. So I'm going to cross off the ones that are biggest first, okay? So 0 0.3 or 0 0.0. So 0 0.3 is bigger than those. So, okay. Now, these aren't going to help me anymore. Okay, so now I have to look at these numbers. It's kind of like ABC order. If they're all the same, you got to look at the next letter. Same thing with numbers. If they're all the same, you got to look at the next number. Okay, so I have a 2, a 0, and a 1. Well, it's not going to be 2. It's not going to be 1, which means... 0 0.003 is my least value. Okay? All right. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out for 7.2. Come on back for 7.3. See you soon.